Welcome. In this video, terminology, slang, and mechanics will be explained for Girls Frontline. In Girls Frontline, there are six different types of firearms, each serving a purpose while on missions. There are handguns, or HGs, mainly serve as buffers and debuffers. Their health and damage are low compared to other types, but the tile buffs, skills, and night vision for night missions are indispensable. Their tiles buff all types of firearms. Submachine guns, or SMGs, mainly serve as tanks, but also have grenade throwing and damage buffing capabilities when it comes to their skills. Their accuracy and damage are poor comparatively, but their ability to tank shots either through shield skills, evasion skills, or having a large health pool make them great. Their tiles usually only buff ARs. Rifles, or RFs, mainly serve as one of the main damage dealers with high accuracy and armor piercing capabilities, but suffer from a low fire rate and health. Their skills are usually damage buffing, rate of fire buffing, or large bursts of damage. Their tiles usually only buff HGs. Assault rifles, or ARs, are the jacks of all trade when it comes to T-Dolls. Most of their stats are average, but their skills are what make them great. ARs have skills that buff their damage or rate of fire, fires a grenade, supports other ARs, or buffs in night battle. Their tiles usually only buff SMGs. Machine guns, or MGs, are the other big damage dealers of T-Dolls. Their high rate of fire, damage, and armor piercing capability allows them to mow down armored enemies like it's nothing. Their skills usually buff their own damage or rate of fire. But MGs suffer from low accuracy and needing to reload after firing for a certain period of time, making them good in short bursts, but vulnerable afterwards. Their tiles usually only buff SGs. Finally, there are shotguns or SGs, who are the best tanks in the game. Their health pools are massive, and they can equip armor, which decreases damage taken from non-AP attacks. Their skills are spit fairly evenly between defensive and offensive. Their attacks also have a chance to push enemies back, being especially useful for when fighting melee enemies. Downside is, they suffer from the same reload requirement as MGs. Accuracy, rate of fire, and evasion, and damage are low. SG tiles usually only buff MGs. There are also many different types of echelon and squad formations in Girls Frontline, all serving different purposes, also having benefits and drawbacks. There are AR SMG echelons, which are the bread and butter of Girls Frontline, having good survivability and damage but not really specializing in anything. RF HG echelons have better damage output and AP capability and do well in night battles but have low survivability. MGSG echelons have high burst damage and survivability, but consume upwards of 1,000 ammo and rations when resupplying. Mob echelons are built around Grenadier ARs and are able to kill large swarms of enemies that are tightly packed. Night battle formations, which have HG supporting ARs by providing buffs and night vision. Sometimes it has an SMG for tanking. And finally, there are high burst sniping echelons, also known as bamboo echelons. They're built around RF dolls that have high burst damage skills, being able to instantly kill some bosses. But this type of echelon has been less used recently due to newer RFs. Manpower, ammo, rations, and parts are all resources that are used in most things in Girls Frontline. Manpower and parts are used to repair and deploy T dolls. Ammo and rations are used in battles by echelons, and all resources are used in upgrading equipment and construction. Players passively gain these resources every 3 minutes, gaining 3 manpower, ammo, and rations every 3 minutes, and 1 part every 3 minutes. Players can also gain these resources through daily and weekly missions, logistic missions, and purchasing through the store. Tiles are the buffs to different stats T-Dolls can give to other T-Dolls. In Echelon Formations, there is a 3x3 grid where you can position the T-Dolls. On the right, when you are selecting a T-Doll, the tiles that the T-Doll provides can be seen in blue, with where the T-Doll is in white. 
Next to that, it explains what kind of T-Dolls are affected by the buffs and what the buffs are, such as evasion boost or damage boost. Positioning a T-Doll correctly allows for the buffs to apply to the maximum amount of T-Dolls possible. For a T-Doll to get to level 100, they require 3,263,200 EXP, equating to about 1,088 combat reports. For a T-Doll to reach level 115, the minimum level required to get to mod 3, they'll need 10,083,200 EXP, equating to about 3,362 combat reports. T-Dolls can also be dummy linked, which increases their damage and health, while also increasing XP received by the doll, up to a 3 times multiplier at a full dummy link of 5. Rarity also dictates how many dummy link cores or duplicate dolls are required to dummy link, along with needing to be a certain level. Dummy link levels are unlocked when the T-Doll reaches level 10, 30, 70, and 90. At 2 star rarity, the cost to dummy link is, starting at level 10 and ending at level 90, 1 core or 1 dupe, 1 core or 1 dupe, 2 cores or 2 dupes, and 3 cores or 3 dupes. At 3 star rarity, it's 3 cores or 1 dupe, 3 cores or 1 dupe, 6 cores or 2 dupes, and 9 cores or 3 dupes. At 4 star rarity, it's 9 cores or 1 dupe, 9 cores or 1 dupe, 18 cores or 2 dupes, and 27 cores or 3 dupes. Finally, at 5 stars, it's 15 cores or 1 dupe, 15 cores or 1 dupe, 30 cores or 2 dupes, and 45 cores or 3 dupes. If the player only has 1 or 2 duplicate dolls for the 4 or 5 links respectively, the core cost goes down by however much the starting core cost was when using the dupes. Dummy link cores can be gotten through daily or weekly missions, packages, or through retiring 3 star and up T-Dolls. As T-Dolls level up, their stats increase, but there is a latent potential for these stats to be further improved. Enhancing T-Dolls in the factory menu allows the T-Dolls damage, rate of fire, evasion, and accuracy to be improved greatly. These stats can be improved by using other T-Dolls or enhancement capsules. Enhancement capsules can be gained through the capsule mode of the combat simulations, or through daily rewards. All T-Dolls come with a skill, which is able to be upgraded through the research tab. Training requires training data, which comes in three different types. Basic training data is used to level the skill from levels 2 to 4, intermediate is used from levels 5 to 8, and advanced data is used from levels 9 to 10. Training T-Dolls also takes time, making the T-Doll unusable while they undergo training, starting at 1 hour for advancing from level 1 to 2, and 24 hours when advancing from levels 9 to 10. It takes 600 basic data, 1020 intermediate data, and 500 advanced data to get a skill to level 10, the max level. Training data is gained through the data collection combat simulation, with level 1 giving basic data, level 2 giving intermediate, and level 3 giving advanced. Level 1 rewards most data out of the 3, with level 3 giving the least. Equipment can be enhanced, making their buffs better. Enhancing costs either resources or other pieces of equipment and resources, with using other pieces of equipment bringing down the cost of the resources. The maximum enhancement level a piece of equipment can reach is 10. Unique pieces of equipment are more expensive to enhance. Equipment can also be calibrated with resources and calibration tickets. Calibrating equipment enhances their buffs and lowers their drawbacks. Calibrating is a gamble to see if the bar will move to the right or not. Fairies are an amazing way of further enhancing the Echelon's combat capabilities. Being produced through the heavy equipment construction, they can not only provide buffs to the T-Dolls in the Echelon, but also other effects such as allowing the Echelon to airdrop onto any landing zone on the map, improving the chance of getting a rare T-Doll, and raising experience gain from combat. T-Dolls can equip different types of accessories, ammunition types, and bodily equipment depending on what type of firearm they are or if the equipment is specific to them, being categorized into accessories, magazines, and T-Doll equipment. 
there are optical sights that increase crit rate, equipable by all TDOs, but handguns. Suppressors that increase crit rate and evasion, equipable by all TDOs, but MGs and SGs. Holographic sights that increase accuracy and damage, but lower rate of fire, equipable by all TDOs, but HGs. Night combat equipment that decreases the night penalty reduction, equipable by HGs, SMGs, and ARs. There are two types of red dot sights. One that increases accuracy but reduces rate of fire and is equipable by all TDOs except HGs, and the other that increases crit rate and accuracy and is equipable on HGs and MGs. Armor piercing ammo that increases armor penetration and if using the M1022 sniper rounds increases damage and is equipable by MGs and RFs. Microchips that increase damage, rate of fire, but reduce crit damage, equipable by SMGs and ARs. Ballistic plates that increase armor, but reduces evasion, only equipable on SGs. There are two types of exoskeletons in Girls Frontline, heavy and light versions. The heavy version increases evasion much more than the light, but also reduces damage. The light version increases evasion, but not as much as the heavy, but also doesn't reduce damage like the heavy, equipable by HGs, SMGs, and ARs. Hollow point ammo increases damage but reduces armor penetration, equipable by SMGs and HGs. Cybo slugs that reduce the amount of targets hit but increase damage and accuracy, only equipable by SGs. Triple lot buckshot that increases damage and critical damage, only equipable by SGs. 7.5 Birdshot that increases the amount of targets hit and rate of fire, but reduces critical hit damage, only equipable by SGs. Shotgun Flashbang Shells that increase accuracy but reduce damage, only equipable by SGs. Camo Capes that increase crit damage and reduce movement speed, only equipable by RFs. Signal Flares that increase echelon accuracy but reduce rate of fire, equipable by HGs and SMGs. Ammo boxes that increase the ammo before needing to reload, but reduces evasion, only equivalable by MGs. Slap ammo that increases AP, but reduces rate of fire, only equivalable by MGs. And high velocity ammo that increases damage, only equivalable by ARs. Mods, or Digimind upgrades, allow for select T-Dolls to gain a secondary skill, along with a unique piece of equipment, minor stat increases, and their level cap to be raised to a maximum of 120 at Mod 3. To be able to unlock the first, second, and third levels of Mod, the Tito must be level 100, 110, and 115 respectively, while also being at 100 affection. Affection can be gotten through winning battles, giving gifts, and tapping the hearts in the dorm. The number of combat reports needed to get a Tito to the levels mentioned previously are 1,088, 670, or 335, Oath, and 1607, or 804, with Oath. If you're planning on grinding 0-2 for experience, it will take roughly half of the combat reports and runs required. Roughly 544, 335, or 168, and 804, or 402, respectively. Modding also requires dummy cores and memory fragments. Dummy cores can be gained through retiring 3-star and up T-Dolls as previously mentioned, daily and weekly missions, and resource packages. Memory fragments, on the other hand, can only be obtained through the combat simulation Neural Cloud Corridor, which, unlike other combat simulations, is available all days of the week. The basic level gives a reward of 8 frags, with possible node rewards giving 3 frags per, for a max reward of 11 memory frags, requiring 1 energy. The intermediate level gives a base reward of 20 frags, with possible node rewards being 5 for a max of 30 memory frags, requiring 2 energy. The advanced level gives a base reward of 30 frags, with a possible node reward of 10 frags per, for a max reward of 60 memory frags. Memory frags can also be obtained through viewing mod stories in some resource packages. The cost for modding T-Dolls varies depending on their rarity. 
two stars require a total of 60 cores and 2,000 memory fragments, taking roughly 11 days to get the memory fragments through the neural cloud corridor. Three stars require a total of 90 cores and 2,600 memory fragments, taking roughly 14.5 days to get the memory fragments. Four stars require a total of 120 cores and 3,200 memory fragments, taking roughly 17.5 days to get the memory fragments. Finally, five stars require a total of 150 cores, 3,800 memory fragments, and 10 fire control components, FCCs, which are mainly available through the Expedition Black Market, with two being purchasable per month. To get memory fragments, it will take roughly 20.5 days but will take over five months to obtain 10 FCCs. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please check out my other videos.